Get your day started right. From our shack to yours, this is Coffee and Ham Radios. We are live in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, that was almost a catastrophe. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. Was. <laughs> uh, Chuck was telling us about his refrigerator, and I'm all listening intently and not paying attention. I'm like, oh, damn, damn. It's, it, <laughs> it's go time. <laughs> we got to go live. So uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. Welcome oh, to everybody in the chat. Uh, today is a Saturday, right? It's May May 14th. Um, and we're going to talk about mobile radios and mobile ham radio installations today. Um, yeah. But before we do that, let's say hi to the esteemed group of ham tubers. We have a T.O. to my one side. Hi. Howdy, T.O. Anything you want to say? <laughs> no, I'm good. All right. He's then good. directly below me is James. <laughs> Hola. James. I move you up there. How you doing? Woo! Doing good. Happy He's got to be a special, here. special setup for us today. I You're do. floating, Jim. Oh, yes, you are. Because <laughs> the banner, the, <laughs> the banner adjusted, at the bottom. Right, okay. Adjusted to the ticker, not. <laughs> move it, move back down when he's done, ape. Here, right. <laughs> the banner cover, come up to here on him. Oh man, you can make me change stuff while we're live. You guys, you're killing yeah. me, Smalls. And then uh, Chuck, how you doing, buddy? Hey, doing great. Um, I, I've got a couple things. One of my next videos going to come out is going to be at the YouTubers Ham Fest. Um, I think you guys will really want to check that one out. Something new, something cool. Something and borrowed, doing a, something blue. Yeah, it's all the, it's everything. <laughs> it's it's, Chuck it's all that. It's all that, let me tell you. No. I'm looking um, forward to the Ham You know, Fest. it's, are you? Yeah, me too. And then I've got a, uh, I had a company send me, uh, we were talking about refrigerators, and uh, it's like an overlanding fridge in I'll probably have that. Out. Well, I'll have that out by the nineteenth, I think. Probably yeah, it's before. Iceco Overland. Iceco, yeah, they're, they're actually. I'm, I'm a very impressed with this thing. It's um, really nice. Well, it's the so nicest thing I've seen from China since the X6100. I was trying to figure out the difference between an overlanding refrigerator and a camping refrigerator, and the only thing I Same can thing. figure out is about seventy five dollars. Color. Well, the <laughs> overlanding one comes in olive drab, or the coyote. overlanding one is rugged. Uh, Actually, this one really is. You guys, are, it's. I'm impressed with this. I have to say, um, yeah, not just because they sent it to me, but uh, just because it is. But uh, you guys, think of a uh, a Yeti on steroids. That's what, yeah. You that got a different model than I got. Yours is a lot, a lot more rugged than mine. I got the actual like the one they the guys use for overlanding. I think more. I'm getting reports that the stream is freezing. Can anybody in the chat uh, <laughs> verify or deny these allegations? Mine looks good. Hey, know. Rob, how you Looking doing? fine on my YouTube here. Looking fine. I mean, you know, you look like Ape. I don't know if I'd go with fine, but, you know, you look all right. <laughs> right. It, looks, it looks the same. Right. right. Well, You're moving. <laughs> all right. Well, why we're uh, – what, what, and then uh, WEC Gary saying we're good to go. So Jim, you were gonna you were you were messing around with the oscilloscope late last night, and then early this morning. I know we're supposed to talk about mobile installations today, but uh, you you were you did a sweep or something. We wanted to check it out. Well, we were talking. You know, we were talking Thanks, about band, bandpass filters two weeks ago, last week. I don't remember. I'm a little fuzzy. I don't know. Last week or the week before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine when you're uh, hamming. Yeah, it's ham twenty four seven here, man. And so I wanted to. Um, I wanted to tinker with it on the oscilloscope. I hope you guys can see that well enough. Nice. There's just and one so, really weird looking thing down in the lower right hand corner. Yeah. Oh, oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> I see. That. I guess very clever. Very clever. So, you know, we were talking about we were talking about looking at the filters and um, and you can do it with a tiny essay. And you can do it with a nano VNA and looking at the curve of the filter. And obviously, you can do it with the spectrum analyzer, all those things. Now, the nano VNA and the SA both sweep to like what, four gigahertz, six gigahertz, somewhere in there. So they have a hu huge range that they'll sweep through. Um, with an oscilloscope, you're going to have to use a signal generator, and they don't have a range of gigahertz. They have a range generally about high endy ones probably 100 megahertz most of them are going to be around 40 to 60 megahertz so you can't sweep the entire planet but you can sweep hf filters and below with them so 
you know. So, like, I was doing this on the oscilloscope, and the oscilloscope, this is a Regal uh, MSO50, whatever this thing is, 5074, and it has a built-in signal generator, so we can set up, my big head's in the way, we can set up our sweep, and what I have set up is this thing doing a sweep from, um, like, 100 kilohertz up to 200 kilohertz. And then we do a math function, and I don't want this to turn into scope 101, but we turn on a math function, and the one we're using here is called FFT, Fast Fourier Transform, and that takes the Fourier. time versus amplitude signal that, a, that an oscilloscope shows and chases it to um, time versus frequency. So, so this is... Fourier, is that a Cajun word? Fourier. I, I, I think it's French. Hey, Cajun. It's French, man. It's Creole. Fourier. Oh, French. Fourier. Fourier. I, it depends on where you're from. Um, in Nebraska, it might be Fourier. I, you <laughs> Fourier. Know, in Wisconsin, Jim, it'll be like, I want some cheese with that. Jim, you're coming into the stream five by five. Everybody else right. is not. Woo! That's right. Chuck's, Chuck's wanting to show something. I don't know what he was no, doing. No, Chuck. no, so, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to show it or not. It's, oh, okay. You were just so, checking to see if it could be shown. Anyway, yeah. so you do this you math guys. function called FFT, and it takes our our amplitude versus time and changes it to amplitude versus frequency. And so what we're doing is we're sweeping over the range that this filter will band pass, which is around 125 kilohertz. And that's what our band pass is. Now, I haven't got this all dialed in, so this thing's not jiggling around. I don't have all the triggers set and everything. But generally, you can see where we have that nice um, delineated hump there. Yeah. There so, yeah, and again, it's moving because I don't have the triggers set to lock it when it triggers. But you can see the you can see the band pass. So you, you can, can do this with an the oscilloscope. Roll, the roll loss, right. and you could probably use the grid to measure the three dB down and all that other stuff, right? Right. That's a, right. That's a nice skirt you got there too, Jim. And I, well, thank you, Stephen. <laughs> I like the trim of your skirt. <laughs> Easy there, cowboy. This is a family <laughs> stream. It's a, so, it's a sharp skirt. What's cool about this is now this is this is not a cheap scope. Um, this is I don't know what would we call this a we lower call gym middle, level. We call gym lower level. middle end. Middle this is where you end. show up know. on the FT8 off scoreboard. And, <laughs> oh, there we go. That's right, about the middle. And uh, and it ain't lab grade gear, but anyway, so you could do this if you have a um, signal generator and an oscilloscope. So even with that scope of Steve's. We could do this. He just had a signal generator sweep. Even with even with Steve's lowly, yeah. might be <laughs> even with precision. Steve's lowly ghetto 1964. Steam what is that powered. thing? Like this 10 megahertz yeah, steampunk yeah. scope. Yeah, that's right. when they made real ones back then, Jim. Well, thanks for sharing that with us, uh, Jim. We appreciate it. So no worries. We're back. So today we were going to talk about um, mobile installations. And what I've started to do was make some slides. I was like, a mobile installation is an installation in a vehicle. But I decided not to do that. And what I was going to throw out there to the group is, is that what do you consider a mobile, a mobile installation? To me, it's in a car, right? And then their question comes up is that what if you have to get out of the car to put an antenna up? Does that become portable at that point or are you operating mobile? And then what are the difference between portable and mobile? Well, I don't know. Static mobile is one. Static right. mobile? That means you're not moving. Okay. A static a mobile? Uh, that, I thought yeah. that was considered fixed. Operating from is a Is there a synergy location. to that? Do we need to circle it's around? Thing. Circle it's back thing. on I'm that? Telling you, man. Difference between parking and standing. We got a, we got a bicycle mobile CB. is one of the answers. Bicycle mobile. There you you see people riding around on them bicycles, you know, operating. I think that's crazy. I don't well, KB9 VBR does, right? That's in his um, intro. He's got his, he's yeah. got his uh, uh, HD in his bicycle helmet. Yeah, because he's doing a, he's doing like a race or something. Got way him, Bob went out and he set up his uh, his electric bike and and got everything. I think it was electric bike. Got everything ready to do HF bicycle mobile. And he's starting to screw the antenna down to the seat support. And I'm like, son, that's going to burn pretty bad. <laughs> and he's just using the, the bicycle like a tripod. He's operating from a picnic table. I was like, thanks, I think. Th th okay. Thanks well, for you. I've done, I've done motorcycle mobile. Yeah. 
done yeah. two meter on my uh, on the Harley. Well, yeah. while you're at it, Chuck, um, WEC wants to know if that's Chuck or Friar Tuck. Friar Tuck, I don't know. You tell it's, me. I think he's I think he's poking fun at that cloak you're wearing. Is that a cloak or is that a sweatshirt? Or Chuck is a here? Jedi. That's oh, that, this that is KK this? six US by hoodie. That's the <laughs> awesome like that hoodie. Is, that's his Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, that's okay. right. Hoodie. I saw those on my. Oh no. <laughs> Actually, I don't I'm recommend just saying, my people own stuff in the comments right got now. jokes. Well, you know. So if I have if I if I'm going if I go to the Walmart for example and I have my my Balfang clipped to my belt, am I operating? Well, and I'm listening. Let's put it that way. I'm listening. Am I operating mobile or portable? Portable. You're operating badass because you have an earpiece right on that thing. That's <laughs> on your FBI belt. style, style earpiece. Yeah. And they think you're Walmart secure. Oh, that guy's Walmart security. Put that back. I heard somebody was thieving over here, and we're going to get to the bottom of it. Um, that blue shirt made out of recycled <laughs> water bottles, park benches. I would call, what happened? What I would call that mobile, did I guess. Did you get upset over the fire talk? Oh, here it goes. Yeah, he changed. <laughs> I was, uh, no, I was, I was, I was going to show you my, I have a, I have a deal. Not, not my, my helmets for my motorcycle. I, I was, well, I used to use a certain brand and for the headsets for, and we do bike to bike Bluetooth, right? Which is, it's so, so we used to do uh, both things actually tell you the truth mm -hmm. and they were way better, but, uh, but you're tethered, you know, and it was after a while it, it gets kind of tiring, but I've got this Bluetooth thing from that company that I can hook my radio into. I can just set up, I have like a little dash thing and I set it in there sideways. It wasn't, I just tried it one day and uh, it Bluetooth to my headset. I was able to link the two and then it has like a little thumb button that you can use for uh, the push to talk and it, it worked pretty good no that's awesome i did a i did put together i, got, I asked everybody in toads i said can you um can you post some pictures of your mobile installations and they did and so i got some pictures that i think we're going to take a look at and see what the what they sent in and we can talk about them there spoken neighbor you parked at the walmart or shopping at the walmart first would be m the latter would be p that is true Sweet. For your APRS, I Sweet guess. Sweet must have just taken his test. I'll tell you what. Somebody fancy this morning. All right. So here's what oh, we wow. have. Um, we call I called it mobile installs because I was being creative. And Ooh. this is Daitengu. Is that how you say that? Oh, nice. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Daitengu. Yeah. He's another Mike, I think, right? Yeah. And he listens to war. I know that. He um, must, he must war. live a bike. He must live someplace where they salt the road a lot. Just because yeah, he's got that uh, chewed up. Uh, yeah, he's got a nine call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks pretty nice, man. Yeah. Well, so what he's he's actually got. So if you take a look at this, he's got some sort of antenna on the roof of his house. So we don't want to conflate the, uh, the all the structures. There's but the one antenna. on the house looks like it's got a little tripod action goes mm -hmm. up. And then he's got a little side antenna on there for his two meter, 70 that centimeter. Looks like one, looks like. Is he here today? That looks like one of those. Um, Cush crafts, maybe. And probably the the best comment so far that Tobar looks like an ankle cutter. It sure does. Hell yeah, he rounded that's a, the edges. That's a that's a vehicle locator without NVDs on. Yeah, so he's got this piece of metal. <laughs> I guess somebody made that for him, but that has got to be there full time because you can't keep taking that that hitch ball off all the time, right? So the ball is there because that's probably the cheapest way to get a bolt that big. But he'll pull the hitch out of the receiver and stow it in the trunk like right. he's got shown in that bottom picture. I was yeah, thinking about yeah. that myself. Like, oh yeah. You can't tow with that at all. Any any trailer hitch on the back of your pickup is a is a knee knocker. I mean, oh yeah, until you get used to it, and then you grease it, and then it's even worse because then you if you barely just brush against it, you have grease all over you. Good morning, yep. John. Well, so he's got this big old giant whoop on here, and then he's got a coil in the middle whoop. of that. Is that whoop a uh, ripper coil? Yeah, and then he's got another whoop on top of that, mm -hmm. and. And then here was him showing how he can take it all down and pack it all down. But he's got another antenna in the center of the roof of that uh, mm -hmm. of that car. See it? Multi-mobile. Like Probably a dual bander. Like that. Yeah, so thank you for uh, for sharing that. <clears throat> so this is our very own Liberty Cave. And uh, I love Jeeps, so I, I got all worked up about this the second I saw it. Um <laughs> Now, I think he said he was changing this radio out, but this is his Alenco. He's using it for APRS. This, this is the radio that everybody gets all, the um, DR-135, mm -hmm. gets all worked up because it has a built-in TNC. Is that right? Did I say that right? 
I was looking at this the other day, actually, yeah. yesterday. Yeah. To tell you the truth. But it's got a um, data port. I don't know if you can see that in the upper left-hand corner. There looks like a headphone jack. That's actually a data port that goes in there. Yeah, he says he's going to the Any Tone 878. But um, th this was considered for years to be the APRS digital two meters, 70 centimeter. There's two different versions um, uh, mobile radio to get. I almost got one. I did not. Uh, I'm pretty sure Jason's got one of these that uh, you know, uh, he uses. He's, he's trying to he's trying to go uh, Australia in there with that mount in the front with his antenna. Yeah, Except I've always not, wanted it's not to near do... bulky enough. I always want to do something like that with uh with my Jeep. He's got some pretty good looking coax coming out of here. I don't know what that is. Yeah. I don't like it's armored. Armored. He's in the chat. What kind of coax you got, son? And then he's got another antenna here in the center. Um and I think this is called a spider, spider venom hood or something. It's a ventilated hood to keep the engine oh, nice and cool. That's the at first I thought, like, why does he have that antenna inside the cab? But I see what it is now. Yeah. And then if you take a look here, this is a strap where he's showing that um, his hood is grounded or is mm -hmm. bonded, I should say, to the to the frame. Bonded. bonded. So Just so you know, we can't head. see your mouse. You um, don't know what it is. He got it for his birthday. That came. Upper yeah, so right-hand like, corner. Yeah. For the upper right-hand corner, you can see the strap coming off of that. So we, what that does is the hood can be considered like a floating piece of metal, but once you bond it like that to the frame or the chassis or something like that it becomes part of a larger ground plane helping that antenna that mag mount that's in the center of the hood we can talk we can talk about that later once we get the pictures done because no i did think that, that antenna was in the uh in the back of the jeep or something for a hot yeah minute. yeah it's well on, the, it's on the middle the, of the hood okay the only other thing i wanted to say is um liberty i have this exact same winch and my controller outlet where you, where I, I have the wired controller, not the remote controller. One of the pins in that broke off, and I was wondering. And apparently, they, they said it's really common with this particular model. I was going to see if you had that. Is that problem. the Smitty Belt? It is. Yeah, mine's actually a remote control. It's a Bluetooth now. Yeah, mine uh, isn't. You you plug it in, and so I had I had uh, work done on the Jeep, and they were messing with my winch, and they pulled like six feet of a string out, and they couldn't wind it back up because the pin was broken. I'm like, why are you guys messing with my off. stuff? So uh, let's take a look at the next slide. I had to put a bigger, I had to put a bigger Jeep or a bigger um, nice. Jeep hauler on my Forerunner because I was pulling Jeeps out all the time. Gotcha, Liberty. Thanks, man. Ooh, look at that, that. glamour shot. Yeah. On the beach, I, I, I had to crop it because it had his license plate number in there, and I didn't know if he wanted. Is that the that. sun or the moon? I don't know, but what I can see in the background <laughs> is it looks pretty flat. Um, that's his signal. <laughs> yeah, that's his, that's his antenna, corona yeah. This Corona yeah. ball. <laughs> he's using one of those Tway radio antennas. So that's he's got right. the, oh, that's the right. very sought-after right. uh, Kenwood that you can't buy anymore. Yeah, so Marvin's if you operate fancy. HF Mobile, go ahead and post it in the... <laughs> that's right, that's right, Swede. It's no moon. <laughs> that's um, no moon. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you operate HF Mobile, post it in the... Uh, in the chat like i don't get how people can drive around and tune in in radio stations and stuff like that on hf i think it's just crazy but I, I don't lot, much and a lot but, of people do so uh, here have we more have more skills the, than you yeah yeah we have the we have a yesu hf that uh sitting there on 20 meters and uh or, or t <laughs> yeah 20 meters and um i don't know which antenna he's using for that <clears> but uh <throat> there looks like there is one in the center of the roof of the cab and then he's got one on the driver's side coming out of that front fender. That looks like a ham radio installation to me, and that's probably looks like AM FM to me. I was well, that's, I'm gonna say it's probably a factory <laughs> AM FM on the other. Oh, he's side. talking about the other one, Chuck. I oh. want to know what he used for a bracket to fasten all that mess on the on the dashboard. Yeah, you can see a little bit of bracket in between the two bit. of them, though, yeah. right? Yeah, he's got, so, he's got I was, something else behind on the left there too. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say this. This boy is all ham all the time. That's not the AM FM antenna on the side. That's a ham stick. He's replaced. Uh, Chuck, I bet that's a GPS antenna, maybe in the in the window up there on the left. Well, here's what he's got: main units mounted under back seat. So this is just the front faces of these two, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. uh, well, he's got it on the cutting board. He's got a Diamond SG seventy five hundred mounted on the roof. SGC tuner mounted to the right. So that's what that th those three lights are: is tuner. And okay. what else does he have? 
he's got a wire from there to a stripped ham stick. So Tio is right about the ham stick and the wire looks hooks to the top of the fiberglass with the stinger going up, gave him about 14 feet of transmitting wire. Hmm. Also so when you stopped, yeah, which, which, um, which that Kenwood is, is, is that, uh, Chuck, you were talking about it. I don't remember Kenwood numbers. They're hard to remember. It's a TM something or other, isn't it? It looks yeah. like the one that, it looks like the one everybody likes for the, uh, TM dash D 700. Oh, look at you. Yeah. It's right well, because it's written it. there in text. Thanks, Ape. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for setting me up, buddy. That may be the older version, though. But they they discontinued it. That's I I know uh, Kyle Kyle runs like a Kenwood and a Yesu because they both do things better than the other. So Red says he a wants a lot to try of money for two meter. I Who? just don't Red Summit Red Summit. What's he have? He has that little eight. Yeah. I can barely tune the VHF channelized radio while I'm driving, let alone screw around with HF. <laughs> I can barely drive while I'm driving. You know what I mean? Right. I know. There's so many detract distractions. <laughs> well, I got my slow jam going. You know, I got my now, truck going. <laughs> I don't have any oh, HF. I don't have the HF radios mounted on my truck at this time. But what I usually do is I have a console and I set either the 73 uh, nice. I don't have a 73 either 991 or my 857 up there and I will just walk r drive down the road with one hand and the other hand just kind of spin the dial until I hear somebody but usually I set it on a on a band but you, I have the ability to change bands on the road but it's too hard to do uh, driving the way I have mine set up we forgot to plug Charlie's show we yes, got time. Charlie's he's yeah we got time so Charlie will be right after us yeah Red Summit has a uh has a show coming up after us, um, which we'll get a link for you and, uh, and get it posted. We're on top but, of the uh, Liberty. Red, so. Red Summit is a heck of a person, and uh, you might want to check that out too. I, I, I really enjoyed ham. my time with uh, Red when I was in Yosemite with him. I didn't get it. Actually, unfortunately, he was more into the walking stuff, and I was more into the driving to the top uh, stuff. Yeah, so. yeah he's, he seems <laughs> he's younger than you are. Yeah, That's yeah, right, like Chuck. I'm with years. you, brother. If I can't drive to that soda, it ain't never happening. But I'm going to walk with him on the next one. All right, well, I'm going to hit. He meant to carry all my stuff, but uh, I'm, you know. I'm going to hit the arrow to go to the next slide. Ooh. So this is Carlos's wow. installation. He's the uh, he's the parachute guy. If you if you ghetto, know. <clears throat> you know, I you wasn't going to stay. Ghetto. <laughs> what is that wiring job? Ghetto. Is he here? He's ghetto. got more USB than an MF. Look at look at all he's, them USB wires. What is he doing with all that stuff? He's jumping today, Chuck. I don't know. Maybe he's. I don't know. But uh, it's easy for Carlos on, on the antenna mount because he just throws the dummy load on the floor and hooks it up. So, well, is this easy I'm mobile told. for him? <laughs> but so, if you take a look at this Larson antenna what, that he's got on here, is this a wind? I can't tell. Is that a, on glass or is that on his car? Yeah, it's the glass. That's a, oh, that's a glass gosh. mount. My buddy, that's Hottie a different one. Those. That's what I have glass. I put glass <laughs> Inductive mount. through glass. Oh, oh, are you kidding me? So you no, have sir, a Larson works great. Too, or? It works fine. It, I'll tell you. No, I have works. a, I have a different, um, I have a different brand than that, and I didn't get mm -hmm. pictures, um, because everybody else is sending so many pictures. Now Don's saying that's a through the glass mount, so he he drilled a hole in the glass instead of no, no. inductive through nah, the glass. It's, it's it just it's magnetic capacitive directance to go through the glass. Right? And you gotta you gotta keep in mind too, Chuck. I I know you're offended that I'm using a through glass mount. I am, man. I know. There's three repeaters in this county. I don't talk on any of them, and primarily I use my open spot. So I could put a piece of tin foil or a cat leg out there, and it works just the same. Oh uh, well, okay. So I'll give you a little story about these type of antennas. My buddy Javi and I are traveling back from Arizona. Oh dang! I can that burn. I can physically see him, like I don't know, a couple hundred yards ahead of me. He can't hear me because. It's mounted so low, his trailer's blocking it. But I'm talking to a a big rig who's running a 991A, and you know, and he's running two meter on his on on there. And I'm talking to him 50 miles away. Javi can't even hear him, <laughs> and I'm behind him, so I'm farther away. Guys, are we still? If it's on all the glass? you can do, if it's all you are can do, are we still on the glass through mount? I think that's I, what yeah. Chuck is. Chuck is that's what he had. That's what me. he had. He had he had a freaking. One of those headache bars on the back of his truck. I didn't want to drill any holes. I go, well, put it on that. Put a magnet. I don't want to drill any holes. Too. Something. Mine is oh on. So mine is on the rear window on the driver's side, 
because I have a heated rear back window, and you're not uh -huh. supposed to put them on that. So maybe Javi did that. I don't know. But, I mean, mine yeah. works fine. I can hit all the repeaters in town from my house 20 miles away in the county. So Well, we got, we got some people weighing in here. So Let's Red Summit's saying Let's... is through, through glass works great. Glass is conductive. Oh, man. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm going to so go I'll out and test that it. with my multimeter because I don't know if I believe it. I, I, I don't believe that's the word red meant to use there. I'm going to call uh, call red out that. to the carpet. Where's the fire so, up so, here? So this is Taz Paris is asking, mobile's mobile setup, huh? Yeah, Taz is asking where in toads are these pictures. I believe they're in the Coffee and Ham Radio's channel. Yes, I think they so. are, but they're, they're, they're way back. Aren't. I asked a couple days ago. Sorry. You know, yeah. sorry. And then just to just to get back to Don's point, Don, Carlos doesn't trust himself to pack his own parachute. He's got a guy that does that for him. I would. Those guys are like licensed smart me. professionals. Yeah. Smart choice. I would Inductive, trust myself. not conductive, right? So do you think that this is mounted? I think that the body of that is probably the underneath. What do they call that? The deck and that the under the yeah, deck that's window. The, that's actually. Uh, yeah. So he's got know. a a diesel station wagon, seat? a shooting a diesel brake, station if you wagon. will. Yeah. Mercedes. No, the other German make. But uh, yeah, you know, if if you've met <laughs> the other other German make, if you've BMW. met Carlos, it's it's so that he has a, a place to sleep when he gets himself in trouble at home. <laughs> I can understand. And, and, I'd go with a but, mag mount before a glass mount. See, I thought that these Larson antennas were all like the Popo oh, antennas, right? Like, aren't they the ones that all the, that's the police station uses, that the cops use those, right, to go through the glass. That's not, it's not a ham. Uh, I'm getting the meter. It's not a ham hand. antenna. It works fine, though. It does absolutely work fine. Chuck's going to go science for us. Well, let's take a little bit of a look in the, so we have the change compartment here. And um, so that's where we have the, this is the, is the, is that the 350? That's a 300. 300. Yeah. Yeah. 300. And we is have it? one, one, two, three. Uh, yep. Is it? It's a USB, Chuck's the USB 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 guy, Chuck. plugged in. You think it's a 100? You think it's a 200? No, 100. 100. 100, I don't have a color no, screen. 100 is totally different. I didn't. 200 is too sure new for Carlos. But he has some lip chap. Is that some Burt's Bees lip chap that he's got in there? <laughs> he's got to keep his pucker fresh. Is that what is he? Is he's, that what is, is that what that is? You know, I'm it's really this... dry at ten thousand feet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hold on a second. I'm getting ready to jump. Let me put on a little lip chap. Right Might one. be some ladies at the landing zone. <laughs> and then he's got a sharpie for signing autographs in there as well. You know, when when you posted that in the in the Discord, I said this, when you said these pictures, man, clean up behind it so we don't see all the yeah. you know random effluvia. Flush the, flush the toilet, man. That's right. <laughs> Carlos so, didn't get that memo. While we're while we're talking about it, and I, we I think we did a little bit the other day and started getting mm -hmm. everybody all whipped up. I, I wanted to ask, and this goes to everybody in the in the chat too, obviously, is when you put a mobile installation in your car, regardless if it's HF, VHF, or UHF. Um, oh you have to you have a, you have a power wire right that comes out of the back of your your radio. Now my instruction manual said to run both of them fused to the battery terminals. Right? The positive, the positive, the negative, the negative. Yep. There's a lot of people out there that say that that is not the correct way to do it. And where a lot of the drama comes from is is that if you have a fuse on your ground that goes to the negative terminal of the battery and the fuse blows for whatever reason. Your radio is also mounted to other portions of the chassis. For example, where two your grounds, antenna two paths. Yeah, yeah, where your antenna connects. So even though you blow that fuse, you could still have a hot circuit. And depending upon where your radio is grounding out, you could actually cook. You know, you could, it, it could be a, a less gauge wire than the one going right to the battery, um, which could overheat and smoke and all that other stuff. So I just wanted to throw it out there and find out how so you guys are doing. Explain, explain that again. You have more than one path to ground, I guess, is the easiest way to say it. If, if, so if you, the radio if you, chassis to the car chassis is one path, and then the black wire yeah, to okay. the battery is path two. So what are you saying? That we sh you should ground to the chassis directly and not ground to the battery? Yeah. And I'm saying you should, and you should, <laughs> this is going to get everybody worked up. I, I don't see where the fuse, the fuse doesn't help at all, right? The, the, the fuse doesn't need to be there. If, yeah, if so, the radio, yeah, if the radio is mounted to the chassis, right. And I have I'm not heard advising anybody. First, this is just for instance, and this is not advice. Yeah. I have heard firsthand from another ham, Ham Radio Nomad, that he blew the negative lead fuse on his 7100. So it does happen. Yeah, you can blow it. 
But I, if, if I was going that route, and again, I'm not an expert, but this is what I would do in my own personal circumstance. I would insulate the radio from the chassis and then mm-hmm. connect with the ground wire. So there's only one path to ground. And then I would fuse it in a mobile install because mobile is all kinds of, it's like driving through a hurricane every day. As far as the radio is concerned, your, your fuses need to be close to the battery too. That's the now. See, so battery. my fuse block is on the radio or by by the radio. So I have a I have an FTM four hundred, and it's under the seat, under the back seat is where the radio's at. Mm. The remote head up in the front, <clears throat> and the power is back there, and the ground is to the chassis in a convenient spot, reasonably close to the radio. But this, what I'm saying is, if you if you fuse the ground, you have other grounds that are unfused, right. right? And so you want your path to ground to be as low resistance as possible, right? So you want it to be a low impedance path to ground. If right. you use the, you know, whatever it is, the screw for your antenna mount becomes your ground, that's probably a higher resistant than your um, wire that's going directly to your battery. Glass the, antenna. For the win. <laughs> so Marvin just showed up. Marvin, we already talked about your radio install. Yeah, you have yeah, to go I back could, if you re- I rewind get a bit. Any glass to did be we like? Did all. we like Marvin's? We yes, like yes. Now that he's here, we liked it very much. Oh, yeah, it was. It was yeah, it was fabulous. Ever. It was the best one yet. So I don't have my FTM. There's a, a pocket at the un, in the back seat under the back seat, and so the body of the radio is actually just literally sitting in there. It's mm-hmm. not strapped to anything. So it's a projectile hazard in case you get in an accident. Exactly. Um, right no, it's there. in a con- containment area system. He thing. puts a he puts a brick on top of it to hold it down. Yeah, yeah. Chuck, I'm not stupid, <laughs> man. <laughs> so the um, the other thing I was going to mention is is that um, when you take a look inside your car, how many of the electronic components are actually wired back to the negative of the battery? Like most of them are grounded at chassis ground as opposed to the yes. battery ground. And what they're saying is, is that somehow by completing that circuit or that loop, you can be pushing RF through your battery, right? I don't know exactly how that works, but if you're pushing RF through your battery from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, it could be coming right back down on the positive and and coming into your radio and causing interference. So I'll say that I've had my, my radio mounted in my, in my Jeep for five years, at least. Both wires go straight to the battery, and I've never had a problem. But that doesn't mean that I'm doing it right. Oh, I thought you were saying not to do that. God, it's kind of like, no, 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 no. Well, I, think, I, I, think... I am saying that. They're, I'm saying, what do you do? Oh, okay. I'm not telling anybody. Mine's been the same. Mine's been the same way for as long as I've been a ham, whatever that is, six, seven years. So, so your is your Chuck is yours wired straight to the battery? Oh yeah, it's the only way to do it. Supposedly, here he's talking about those Japanese cars with their positive ground chassis. Yeah, you got to watch those. Or British cars. Yeah, too. You had you had that problem, didn't you? I, was it you that was telling me about that? I, I had a, a positive Earth car before. I could remember somebody was saying something about it. That one. <laughs> As remember. Nico saying, fuse block on the power pole distro here, and working doing the rest of the wire and install, and had a friend offer to do the install work for a moto shop. Well, if you can get somebody to help you out, that's the way to do it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Right, well, we're going to let Carlos off the hook. Thank you for sharing, Carlos. Let's see. What he didn't show. Oh, he did show his antenna. So he's not using a dummy load. Now, Greg, WC- well, you might as well be with his glass pass through. I mean, that's true. Well, he is actually. You're right. Oh, man. I'm going to hear about that <laughs> forever, ain't I, Chuck? I can't believe you did that. Yeah, I did it. It's only two meters, man. Who cares? Greg makes an awesome point. If we can quit picking on my through glass antenna, that the car battery, and I, and I, that is absolutely correct that if you hook everything straight to the battery you there shouldn't you have any weird noise in the radio and i will that's a true statement because when i first hooked up my radio i was lazy and i plugged it in the power port in the back of the truck and it hummed on transmit yeah you can pick up like wine and all that stuff but they say oh, that yeah. the cars are a lot cleaner like that was more of an artifact oh, of the 70s beer, and 80s but... hard liquor yeah. cars are great for that stuff <clears throat> it 2019 truck, so it still did it. Yeah. So All we right, should talk about we... bonding while we're on this subject at some point. Bonding. bonding. What's the well, best thing you can bond to your system? Miller Lite? This this would be Boiler Boiler Ryan's installation. Who? Man. 
Boiler Ryan. Boiler Ryan. And he, oh, I'm yeah, pretty he sure I fancy. saw him in the, uh, in the chat earlier. I believe these are really good. What but is that's the radio a, um, Is that Icon? 5100, which is, uh, yeah. I like that radio. I, like, I can I see it too. with my eyes. That was but previously then, located here. He 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 planted some kind of faux cover. Like if you look at the top of that screen, there's a little three D printed thing that he puts over top of that. So I guess it doesn't look oh. like some, something worth stealing. That goes over top of it, or that's how he mounts it. I think no, that's how he mounts it. No, it's, he, he, it's a, he puts it's that on the back mount. with some magnets. So yeah. it's three, four magnets, yeah. 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 It would be a lot cooler if that was like nice a stealth cover, install. so it doesn't get ripped stealth off. Stealth cover. He just takes it off. And he had a different radio in this middle picture where it's all red. That's a different radio, but he moved from that one, I think, to the to the ICOM. Oh. He got an upgrade from uh, Jim's home for Wayward Radios. Yeah, and, and relocation facility. Hmm. Well, and then Jim this. Got... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna say Jim should got rid of his radio because it doesn't have an antenna. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> that was in the house on a J pole, man. <laughs> Stop it, Chuck. Stop it. This is it's the, funny because uh, I can do this to Jim and it doesn't bother him. So the, the, he does the it to antenna me all the time. That I think I've got is the Comet SBB5, uh, and then that looks like the Diamond uh, K400 Universal lip mount, and that's what I use on my Jeep. And I've, and uh, that setup's great, but that mount is even is really really nice. That, you can get it uh, in NMO or there's uh, guys running those. Uh, those are the guys are running those. Um, what's the little uh, the one twenty the ATAS on those things, which on that little mouse. Oh yeah, it's like crazy. Yeah, they're good. And um, that's one badass looking minivan. Is that a minivan or is that like a? Kind of looks like an SUV. I don't know. A GMC it's Terrain. It's a it's a it's a it's an SUV. Mini, a larger than mini SUV, but not a full size SUV. If that makes any right. sense, it's bigger you than can... a Ford Escape, smaller than a Tahoe. So it's like a medium. SUV, yeah. medium, medium. Exactly. Yeah. I always thought the crossover was the next level up from the station wagon. So it's like a crossover is a big station wagon, and then you have the mini SUV, and then you have the medium SUV, and then you have the maxi SUV. It, it's crazy how many SUVs. Well, then there. you had the Ex maxi plus. Explorer size before explorers got one size bigger here recently, because they just well, you, actually they just went through and resized everything. Because the Trailblazer is now a tiny little thing too. So just saying, re remove fused ground. Never seen that in any manual. <clears throat> no, I haven't either. All of them say that. What I'm saying is that some people claim that you should not have that fused. I'm just presenting the argument as fodder and thought, uh, Holy thought wars. invoking conversation. We're not making any recommendations as uh, anything other than follow the manual. And then Ryan's got this sweet fire truck in the background. Do you see that on the top of the shelf? Oh, that's the awesome. I, I want to ride on that. Yeah, I mean, back um, when uh, I was a firefighter, I got to ride on this. Yeah, that, that's um, that's that's pretty cool. And then he also there he is, Jim. I don't know if he's having a party at his house now or not, cause, Chuck because that looks like attention. it looks like the helium canister in that green oh, yeah, box up there that you fill up the party balloons. Um, well, well, he's, what a world uh, we live in where you can what a world we live in where you can just buy a big old bottle of helium like that, right? Or it's illicit. Uh, Freon from the 90s for recharging his air conditioner. <laughs> you can still buy that in Mexico. I'm just saying. Yeah, so um, WC is talking saying bonding on the mobile is like radio intent, radials on your vertical. More of the better. So, Tio, you wanted to talk a little bit about bonding, so the floor is yours. Yeah, I wanted to talk about it because I don't know a whole lot about it. Um, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to connect all of the metal panels to your vehicle you know, on your vehicle together. So like if you drive a pickup right. truck, your pickup truck bed is probably isolated from the frame. So if you mount your antenna to the pickup truck bed, which is pretty common, the pickup truck oh. bed is not mounted to the truck through any electrical path. So you got to go back and do all that. It's supposed to knock out noise and mm -hmm. help out. And like Greg's saying, it's supposed to act as more radials. I don't know a lot about it. My mind tells me, that because the car itself generates a lot of noise, I would probably want to operate a battery powered system to isolate myself from all the electrical noise in the car. But I don't know. I've done I've done that before too. I just hooked up my radio instead of trying to wire, you know. I've actually got I've got like a four gauge wire underneath my seat that I that I put in for an amp, but I can run all my radios off it. But uh the one of the best things you can hook to your frame is your your exhaust system. And supposedly you're supposed to uh, attach it in multiple places. The exhaust is like one of the one of the. I mean, it's the whole length of your car. 
so that's supposedly one of the bet one of the one of the things you should for sure hook into your frame and stuff and like Tio well they said, say it's the, a good way bed. to remove noise right and that yeah. you're in interference i don't have a lot of out. noise i have a diesel and i don't think they make as much noise sometimes as some of the totally different ignition system yeah yeah mm -hmm. but i'm also talking about rf noise that you're picking up right, from right, right you know from just stuff not just not just a vehicle so with a glass mounted antenna Oh, that yeah. isolates you from all. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, the the glass mount antenna picks up so little that you won't have much noise. <laughs> Good one. I was waiting for that. I teed that up for you, Chuck. <laughs> you I teed did. that up for you. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Sean, a lot of people use that uh, lip mount on the back of the Oh, yeah. Screen. I've seen that all over the place. I think Josh um, has done a couple videos rearranging his car, and he has some sort of hatchback thing he's done. Well, he's, yeah, got, he's got like a he's leaf. got one of those. He had like the leaf, Nissan Leaf yeah. for a while. Um, I've seen so it. I bought a Nagoya hatch mount, lip mount, or whatever it's mm -hmm. called. Fake. One year, one year, and I've had oh, the really? yeah, I've and it was like sixty bucks. I spent like the hundred and fifty or whatever it is on the other one on the um on the Diamond, and it's been on the, there five years. They make that Diamond also in an electric one. If you have it on top of your car and you pull in your garage, you can just fold it down. Mm. Kind of cool. More Electrically folded down? I think so, yeah. Pretty sure. I've seen them. Click. That's fancy. So we're, here's the, here's the uh, Northern European perspective. Josh oh, has the most okay. awesome car in the world, they, the Nissan Leaf. I don't know that I can agree, but okay. Yeah. Uh, it's you don't, not a you don't see truck. Cummins Diesel. You don't see Cummins Diesel working you don't see with Cummins no Nissan those Leaf. Right. You don't see Ford <laughs> F-150 on the side of it. It can't be real. <laughs> When your battery's gone, my, my diesel still has a million miles left. So Marvin's saying horizontal truck surfaces are best for it. Sorry, yeah. I'm just kidding, guys. So bond to the frame exhaust and, uh, and truck bed top rail. Doors. Yeah, don't, don't doors. anyone get offended because this is, uh, you know, four hams on the stream and another 50 in the chat. <laughs> There's probably 57 different opinions in here on this. So See, Liberty's just got a 7.3. That, that was the last good... Uh, oh, never mind. <laughs> More than any of see sneak in here. Yeah, look, we got everybody uh, making fun of the Stevie Ray's in here. Stevie Ray, I met Stevie Ray, you know. Look at this. Uh, most gas tanks are plastic nowadays. Did you get her autograph? Yeah. Look at that. We got uh, Larry from Hammer. Larry, hey, good morning. morning. Better than an autograph. Hey, Larry. All right. Well, I'm going to go into the next slide that we have here, Ooh. and this is Spider Jutting I'm Benjamin. Now, um. Is is jutting his name or is that an activity? His last no, that's his name. Okay, oh, it's, well, like, it's like, kind of both. <laughs> Spotter is not his name. Ben is what his mother calls him. Like, well, I'm like, he Benjamin? is Ben. Is Ben is going spotter jutting? You, you know what I mean? I'm like, I don't know what jutting actually means. <laughs> but... <laughs> that's awesome. Maybe he's transitioning. Who knows? Just and that looks like he's names. got a Ford. Is that a is that a Ford? That's an F one five zero. That is an F one fifty. F one fifty, but he's got the uh, petite cab or petite, petite bed. Is that, is that what they call that? Or I'm just. A... I think that's the bed that comes with. Yeah, that's the same. I don't think there's too that's many the same, in that. Yeah, that's the same bed I have. Actually, there okay. is. You can get a long bed the on the foot. on the crew yeah. cab, but it's yeah. it's like it's turning really an aircraft long. carrier. Yeah. Yeah, he looks like he's got a uh, Wolf River coil on a uh, a hood mount there. It, he has um, a video on this install, if I remember correctly. Oh, does so he? You could okay. check out his channel. Um, what is it? Spotter Jutting? Amateur, amateur Radio. Yeah, Amateur, amateur radio. radio. wanted to say Ham Radio. Yeah, hey, Gary. It may, <clears throat> I don't I think it's Ham. I don't know. But he has a big old Wolf antenna on here, and that, that is going down to a Wolf River coil, right? And then he's probably using some sort of lip mount configuration there. And then I see two wires coming off of that. So one's probably coax and one's probably counterpoise. Could be. Yeah. That's a good over place the, to mount that, too. I like over that. Over the front hood. See, like, to me, this isn't a mobile setup. This is a portable setup because you can't drive down the road with that antenna on there. With counter oh, pie? Oh, I've done it before. With a counter With counter pie? Oh, not with counter, no. I just use my truck. I don't need it. I see the one thing. The one thing that bugs me about all these, and, and with my glass mount, I just unscrew it and take it off. But glass you can't go through the car wash with all that stuff on. Like not, not and keep it. Car wash? Yeah. Look, he likes my to keep car it gets fresh washed and clean. When it rains. I mean, I yeah. might live in Alabama. That doesn't mean I'm dirty now. 
he, he keeps know. it fresh and clean. He's under armor, under armor and tires I, and all that stuff. I hope that wasn't directed to me. I've never said anything about Alabama. I don't do that. <laughs> I'm just bless, saying. Bless I know your people. Heart, I know. Pe- just, I know people that love to hate on other states. I don't do that. Well, I hate on some of them. No. I hate hey, on California, Chuck. I know I kind of hate on California. I don't care. Too. Stay, stay away. New Jersey. Chuck hates on Icom and glass and I, I own an Icom. Damn it! Oh, oh now, now, I like now the yeah, hundred too. How many? How many years you've been a ham until you finally bought an Icom? You know my story on mm. that. If, if We're gonna I would pick have on Chuck Icom, now. It would have been my first one, except that they wouldn't supply a friggin' mount for the radio. I'm like, right. My Cobra came with a mount. Now is the time on a car when you hate on Chuck. If Lionel's a professional. He actually keeps a list so he can get his hate. That's right. His hate streak. That's Good right. You got to keep that list. Wakes up every morning, reviews the list. Right. Who am I going to hate on today? Takes a few right. minutes to contemplate the hate. Right. So what has Ben got mounted in the truck? I can't, I can't really see tell. the radio. That is Any the tone. Anytone. Okay. Okay. That's right. He DMR. is a DMR guy. Yeah. And you can see the fuse right there, Chuck. I don't know if you had any commentary you wanted to provide on that. I only see one fuse. He's probably plugged into the cigarette lighter. I don't know. Can't tell. Yeah, I don't know. I, I do not see a cigarette lighter plug. I see a fuse. It looks like a fuse. That looks like a that looks like actually, a professional actually, mount. That could be a that could be the, the that could be the actual connector. That may not be a fuse. Oh, well, there's I don't know. Who cares? Oh, he's got the Molex it. connector and then he's got a fuse, inline fuse holder. Oh he does. Okay. Yep. I just I assume he just pulled those wires down for us to look at because man, driving with that hanging like that would is oh, yeah. he's seventy. You, you know well, is is he in is he in Europe? Because if he's on the other side of driving, I mean, he's right, like in it's, Iowa. It's clear the same thing. But I was so, like Europe without the crowding. <laughs> right. Larry said he's trying to build his first mobile now. It won't be done until next year, probably. Screwdriver and antennas are pretty pricey. So he's he's talking about HF mobile. Larry's That's going all in, <clears throat> right? And he and he wants to do the driving around while he's on there. Larry, you're going to see the the. Well, a couple of screwdrivers, I think, here. Ham radio um, live in route. Mm-hmm. So this is uh this. Oh, by the way, Gary here, he saved the day today. I had set the chat to members only as opposed to subscribers only by accident. He he tipped me off. Now we normally leave it set for subscribers tip, only tip, to stop tip to stop the Russian the uh, Russian porn <laughs> bots. It sounded like you said he ticked you off, but you said he tipped you off. I just yeah, want to make tipped, sure. Tipped, tipped, tipped. Some, some enunciation there. Like just, thank you, dropped, Gary, is what he's dime. trying to Thank you, Gary. He uh, dropped Gary's, a dime. Indeed. Gary's my Elmer, man. This guy knows his <laughs> stuff. Well, I'll tell you what, man. He helped me out. He posted some good links, coal. Uh, over, over the last couple of days. He has a smokestack coming out of the truck bed. I the coal rolling. <laughs> That that's what I thought that was at first. I was like, I thought that was this, a chimney coming out of there. But uh, Oh, no. So what, a, what what is that's that? It's a antenna black and decker chart? screwdriver. Is what that is. To explain it, it's a screwdriver antenna. They for the motor on that particular one, they use. I think he said a uh, a black and decker. Um, you know the the screwdriver motors. Mm-hmm. I think that's what they use for that one. I forget the the brand. I have a different brand myself. Oh, so this is different. homemade. Huh? Is this homemade? His is not home. No, he bought it. I'm pretty sure, but you said I think the guy that he. Screwdriver. That's what the guy that makes them uses, I think, for the motor. He's probably in here some, but uh, yeah, it's he. I think he bought that. He also, and he didn't. He didn't leave a picture of that. He also runs a halo for six meter in the back of that pickup, because nice. Gary is Mister. He talks every day on six meter into Texas and Florida and stuff. I don't um, think I saw that picture, but if I did, I don't. I, I don't think. He, I don't think he posted Gary. it, which is strange. Because he he runs that too. I've talked to so here's the deal. When I first got into H into ham radio, Gary and I have talked from California, and he lives in somewhere in the Indian Indiana, and we have talked uh, on twenty meters from my house to his truck before. So, and we're we're probably going to get back to there. We can do that pretty soon again, and actually maybe still on twenty. Where, where, Gary, were you driving when y'all had that QSO? Was he? Was he? He was and motivating. He goes, "You're probably going to lose me," and I did. And then he goes, I'll, "I'll be back in about three minutes," and boom, he was right back. And it wasn't like, it wasn't like super loud because, but he actually does have he has an amp in that also. So hmm. he sounds like six meters. 
So He's let me let up. me ask you a couple of questions, Chuck. You were talking about the motor in here, and mm -hmm. th th now this is this doesn't look like a directional. But so he rotates this with the. Uh... No, no, no. Uh, the the kidding, top of it moves. Uh, oh, yeah. God darn it! Okay, so for other people, the top goes up and down. You see the the black part in the middle, and mm -hmm. the black part on top. They probably almost touch. Okay, so he's he's ex, it's extended right now, and there's a couple types. I have a high Q. The high Q does not. It has a big coil, a bigger coil, but it doesn't. It goes up and up and down inside the coil. It does. It doesn't physically right. get taller, and that was one of the things I liked. And and I I wish they still made it. They used to make one that went to a um, that hooked to the AC radius because you know the ATAS one twenty A. You just push a tune button on a bunch right. of the AC radios, and it just tunes. Like um, magic. But it's got a high coil like this high inside, High-T used right? to make right, one Chuck. of those. Huh? Yes. And this then, is a, a three-and-a-half-inch coil. Right. So as you move inductor. the antenna up and down, there's a contact point to this coil. Right, right. That adds or removes inductance to make that antenna look longer or shorter from an electrical mm -hmm. standpoint. Right, is how they work. And, and mine does just the opposite of his. The inductor what is on mine from, moves maybe? up and down. That's that coil is an MFJ coil that they sent over. So thank you for it's, sharing these, Gary. When you people are like, "Well, they're so expensive," but here's the deal: what's a what's a uh, hamstick cost to you? Have you bought uh, one? They're not bad. 30, 35, 40 bucks. Thirty-five, forty bucks. So Gary can do I, at least six through um, eighty, if not one twenty. I'm not sure. So how many antennas is that? So by the time you, so by the time you buy all those ham sticks, and every time you want to change bands, guess what you got to do? You got to stop. Get out of the car. The, yeah. So right. that's the advantage to a screwdriver. Unless you have a kid, and then you just have the kid hang up. The... And 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 uh, Gary can correct me if I'm wrong, but by having the bigger coils, they're a little bit, they're more efficient than just a ham stick. And, and how much I don't know. Well, but you know, a it's little also more bigger, efficient. It's, it's also bigger antenna. I'm not making fun of ham sticks, but I don't get why everybody gets all fevered up and all lathered know. up over them. I'm just not a fan. They work. They work. They work. <laughs> I showed you they, that. Did, did you see my video? Hey, we don't I doubt that they work. Ten watts. Uh, ten watts imagine, into Virginia. Uh, imagine if you had a wire antenna. I know, imagine if you had a real antenna. That's that right. That wasn't the video, <laughs> though. Come on. Eh, ham sticks. His is 20 years old, it says. Okay. <laughs> and I think this Thank is God. Last <laughs> This is uh, Ed Sy. Oh, Eddie. Uh, yeah, KI5, Oscar Sierra Bravo. Oscar Sierra. And he's got his FTM 300 DR. So that's the same one as Carlos has, I think. Yep. Um, this yeah. is a lot then, prettier, though. That's a nice install that he's got there. It looks good. But notice he's got that thing pulled down, see. too. Like it's where's, got the, shade where's the wires? Down. Where's the wires? Where's the lip chap? Um, <laughs> and then, I don't even know what that That's is. Really the good. compact tenna. It looks like it, it looks like a can. I don't know. I thought I thought it was like a little. Um, Boys, well, you know that's a like Tesla, that so it, it has some standards. That's right. It looks this like a Tesla. No, this ain't no Carlos Felix install well, here. I got to tell you, so um, I was looking at this and I was like, this looks like one of those millennial hipster cars. I mean, there's a there's a lot. That's of kind of Ed. <laughs> I was like, he's got this big ipad up here um and but i wasn't sure because i couldn't see the whole car but there was one thing that tipped me off for sure and i said you know what it is a millennial hipster car and it's the shorts that he's wearing in this picture yep. if you <laughs> I saw those shorts i was like yep that's got to be a battery car <laughs> well i would have thought the ginormous pad screen above the radio was a giveaway too is that oh, so maybe that's, that's, that's all his controls. Maybe that's tactical comms or something like that. I didn't know. And then all yeah. of a sudden I see the shorts. But he's got a pretty clean install there. And look how dark that tint is on that window. I mean, that is oh, yeah. like oil spill black, right? I mean. Mm -hmm. That's a limousine. Tint. Yeah. It is Limo fancy. Tint. Jeff is saying he wouldn't own an electric car if you paid him to. I might do it for the money. Um, I'm just going to go out there and say that. Uh, one of these I'd, days, do, you're gonna I'd do anything end for up. love, but I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I put my hamstick on a glass mount. I That's think, right. I think, he's, I think he's missing with somebody there. And Don do doesn't you change have... bands while he's driving, so, so take that. Right. And then um, yeah. 
Jeff is saying, what is wrong with ham sticks? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with ham sticks. I just don't they work. Like, people, people seem to go crazed over the thought of a ham stick in an installation. And that's just, I'm, you know, I don't, they, I don't get yeah, it. They go, they go crazy because they're looking for a shortcut and a ham stick is a, is a shortcut. Oh, I don't have to string 65 feet of wire through a tree. I can buy this we're, dingus, we're, screw some ham sticks in just as good as an in fed halfway. Well, put your 65 wire and up. just trail it behind your truck there, Jim. So he says average ham stick is like 5% efficient. That screwdriver goes to about 20 to, th to 50. Yeah, right. that's coil size. I don't know what he's saying, but yeah, take that, ham stick fans. Ham stick people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, all antennas are a compromise. I'm just saying ham sticks might be more compromised. There's they a time and a place for everything, Jim. They could be Even Russian you. spies. They're so compromised. Yeah. Right. So I think that would, that took us to the end of the... Uh, you didn't have mine? I know. I forgot because you put yours in the private chat, not in the thing. <sighs> Son of a... Listen, well, Chuck, you've got them handy. Share them out. Chuck, share them out. You got them on your computer. was the most uh, awesomest pictures we've ever had. Those were... Uh, those were you had the phone. 857 in there. No. Well, take them from your phone. I had 8,800. I, 8, mm -hmm. I don't even have... Where's my phone? Listen, I didn't see the pictures there, LBF, LBO. He's, he's, I don't know, LBO. <laughs> sleeping on the I job. made it really easy on him so he didn't have to go looking for him and he still didn't get him. So, yeah, look, here's Ham Bandit. Hey, Ham sticking up your tower. <laughs> it's right. Next thing you know, I'm going to make a Ham Stick Yagi. Oh, awesome. You know, it's like it's like I said though. There's I there's no idea probably sixty is. hams here on this, watching or on this stream, and there's seventy opinions. Yeah, no, I mean that. Look, I, mean, I just don't get it. Two of those are mine. right, but you know. All right. Well, so I wanted to. We're starting to run out of time here. Um, what? What? No. 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 We ain't running out of time. Well, I mean, we got to keep the show moving. Is what I'm saying. So everybody, there's just... always time. Cannot run out of time. I'm going to share uh, my screen here. Hopefully, it's the right one that I want to share. Oh, all right. So that is, I went on to um, DX Engineering's website, and I'll it, add it. it's don't worry. It's it's not that I don't like DX Engineering any more or any less than any of the other vendors that are out there. It's just that their site is the most usable. It is. <laughs> yeah. Like if you try to find something on some of those other sites, you know, you you, you need a compass and a map and all that other stuff. So I did a search for mobile transceivers, and this is this is what came up in no particular order. We had an ICOM 2730A, and uh, I just wanted to use these things to spawn conversation. So, like, this one's got a removable face, and my current install has is a Yaesu 7900, which I love, 50-watt um, dual bander. But it has a removable face, and I can't see ever not having a removable face in the, in the vehicle. I don't know what you boys think about that. Mm-hmm. That's I'm all in on that because that's what I use. The, that's how I use the FTM 400. So the FTM 300 has this really slick mobile mount install where you can actually oh, slide the whole thing out and then go take it somewhere with you. Instead of just taking the faceplate with you or moving the faceplate, you can move the entire radio out. So you can uh, operate park bench portable as well as operate mobile. Hmm. It does. That is so, so just cool. an option. And, and like... Drawer. What do you guys think about watts? Like, I, I had a 25 watt in my car for about three years before I got the Yesu in there, which is 50. But I, I think that you probably want to be somewhere around 50, to be honest with you. I do too. I mean, it's whatever you can afford to. But sure. uh, I, I, I regularly talk with my glass mount antenna 50 miles on two meter all the time. I mean, because when you're driving around, you are going up hills and all that stuff. And <laughs> Don't you didn't like always mount antennas, Chuck. Oh, wait a minute. I, I I heard that, Charles. I mm -hmm. I do not. I have a um, taking notes. I have that Charles comet one charge. that you're talking about. I have the diamond version of that uh, two meter. It's a half wave antenna. Mm -hmm. And I get so here's the Yesu. You have this, Chuck. The twenty nine eighty. I I have the twenty nine hundred, and um, yeah. it's actually sitting right there. And it has been one of the best investments I've made in AM radio. I think I got it for like one hundred twenty nine bucks. It does it does uh, seventy five watts. And every time I uh, used to, well, I used to be crazed about checking in the two meter nets, and I would do it all the time. And people would be like, "Boom and signal there, ape, sounding fantastic." Um, 
<laughs> Not nothing but positive comments on it. What, what do you think about your worst joke? I haven't used it much. Um, uh, if it's um, like I said, I've used the eighty eight hundred lots, fifty watts, and that thing gets. I I regularly talk fifty miles down the freeway. I five is which is pretty flat area, and the earth. and I've done. Tell you the truth, one time uh, up camping with I forget it was my I have a cheaper um, the, one of the really small Yesus, and I was talking from this camp all the way past. I mean I'm like a couple 150 miles from my house, and I'm talking to the repeater by my house back to a guy in Sacramento. <laughs> so, so that's. It was pretty cool. I don't know if I could have got the guy just straight uh, simplex, you know. But I think that 2980 for, it's got a huge, that thing weighs, that's one of the heavier radios I've seen. And, oh, it's like a boat anchor. I mean, oh, it's it got is. this massive heavy heat sinks on it. Um, you would have to have, you you ain't, you ain't mounting that in a Tesla. You, you would have to have a big old something <laughs> Tesla doesn't have a big enough battery for 80 watts. <laughs> so... Right. Um, Lon had a great question, and he was asking about external speakers, which we have not talked about. Go on, and do you get you got something you want to talk about? There might be a picture of that someplace. No, I don't have I don't have uh, anything to share with that. Just Lon had the question in the chat. I, I so I have a Jeep, and it's noisy as hell in that Jeep, and mm -hmm. I've got an external speaker that comes out because my body of the radio is mounted under the passenger seat, and. One of the things I like the most about the 7900, and I wish more of these detachable face radios did it, like this, this ICOM does not, is that this microphone connects to the body. Yep, right. That don't like, make no oh, sense. Yeah, on my Yesu, it mounts to the head, and there's just one control cable that goes from the head to the body. That soon should be replaced by Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or something like that. But, um, like, if I wanted to mount this thing in the trunk, now I've got to run a mic cable all the way back to the trunk. And micro ca microphone cables have become susceptible to uh, interference and RFI and noise and all that other oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. So generally, so the, you want to keep them short, right? The FTM 400 suffers from that problem because the mic cable and the control cable for the head all come from the body of the radio. So mm. I actually have two cables running under the floor mats coming up to the front where the control head is at. So I have a speaker, and it's not an expensive one. It's, I mean, it's probably a ten or fifteen dollar speaker on Giga Parts or DX Engineering, and I just have it velcroed to the back seat. I have a F one fifty crew cab, so the back seat's folded up most of the time, and the speaker just velcroed on what is the bottom of the back seat, aimed at the back of my head, so I can hear it because the radio is back there with its little tiny internal speaker. Yeah, that's I my forerunners really well. For one, right now it doesn't have air conditioning, so if it's hot out, all the windows are down, right? So, and it's not the quietest vehicle ever. It's made in 1987, so. And I do have I'm um, uh, I have a, actually a picture of it, but I have one of those little square trucker it ones. It might be older than it might be older than Ed. It might be, and um, <laughs> it does help. I I had it hooked to my CB originally, and I I really need to hook it to my uh, my two meter because it's really hard to hear. Well, well, listen, guys, keep talking about that and talk about this Yesu FT891 mobile. I, I got to, I told you, I to, I'm on the new medication and I hit my form of blood pressure. And go, man, son, I gotta, go. I got to go. go. I got to go. Go, go. He should just go. Man, I just shut him up, but this is not 80 meters. I told him, I told him to go before we came. I said, Did go before we leave. So they, it's like the having kids. That 891 is a good mobile HF radio because it's yep. fairly small. Uh, one of the smaller ones. The I know uh, Gary uses the seventy one hundred, which is a very well. The seventy one hundred is actually like an eight fifty seven. I have an eight fifty seven that I usually use in my truck. Um, the old seven thousands, the seven hundred six uh, is is like uh, Teal has that. Uh, what I I don't know Teal. Do you have two antenna ports on that seven hundred six? Seven hundred six, yes. It does. Okay, some of them uh, the yeah. older ones didn't have it, but. Uh, it's nice to have two if you're gonna, because I can I can set up my. Um, well, I separate usually because I have my two meter radio in there already, but I could actually hook up everything on that on that A fifty seven or this nine ninety one. I may mount the nine ninety one in there one of these days. Just if yeah, I, I can do a, if I can figure out how to do it, where I can take it out quick like that that mount they have for the three fifty or three hundred. I have a seven oh six um, that I just got a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And there's like three models of the 706. I think I have there the is. original one. Mine is 706. It, Mark II. it has two connectors. One is HF and one is VHF. Oh, it does. Okay. 
the later ones, the G model, and I don't know about the middle one, the G model, I think is HF, VHF, and UHF. Yeah. Well, it's like the, that's, that's what Carlos the, jumps with. Okay. I know the 705 only has one, which I thought was weird because I've never had, I've never owned a all band or a shack in the box. I only had one. Did we cover this at 891? Yes, we, we did. did. We did. It's a good radio. It that's does have the, That's one of the best deals out there, guys. Yeah, removable face resonant. as well. And I, yes. somebody was talking about this the other day, and I think I got a comment on this off of one of my videos. But I want y'all to look at that price. $639 for an 891, brand new. And compare that to a certain Chinese radio, and it's $600. And I'm like, you know. Okay, it doesn't have a pretty color screen on it that's no, it straight up doesn't have a pretty color screen and <laughs> it, it has, a, has a sweep not a waterfall and it has yeah. ape eight menus that ape loves and adores <laughs> on the 891 and i'm with ape on that one maybe we're both just I, cranky old men but those menus suck you are i tell you i don't and they i do. don't like the menu. i own that I like man eight, i own that i like the 857 menu better than that one to me it's just i didn't use that one a lot but i have used the 891 it just it seemed weird to me it's not I the just, same that, menu that radio uh that radio there will do dual duty as a shack in your in your house or on the road well, the, plus the, it's 100 the, watts the, the, the argument came out where right that's somebody was uh, giving giving jim sorry. a hard time saying that you know you were throwing too much shade at the 6100 right that's, that's what happened yeah and he, he said where can you get all these features for this kind of money and so the price point is the same as the ft891 now, granted, the FT eight ninety one does not have all the features that the sixty one hundred does. Right, but the implementation of the features that it does have are of a higher quality. So then it turns into a conversation around must have, nice to have, would like to have features. When you look at the radios, yeah, they're two different segments. That's yeah. the hard part. Mm -hmm. There's there's nothing to compare a sixty one hundred to, which is good it's... for Zygu. And then there's a lot to compare an eight ninety one to. I think. Well, like this 891 doesn't have a built-in sound card interface, right? This right. 6100 does. Right. If that is a must-have feature, then your, your options are different, right? If it's a nice-to-have feature, again, your options are different. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got to make those choices for themselves. And and, and I, I answered um, the guy back, and I don't remember who it was. And I'm not, you know, I'm not a adversarial about it, but it's like, it's not the same thing. And what I was talking about in the video was power output anyway. But How the thing I told you, <laughs> right. <laughs> wasn't even talking about the shiny, just the power output. Power output. And good. the other thing is, you know, they marketed that radio with all those fancy features. And this goes to what Ape was saying. All those fancy features, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, color screen, waterfall, yada, yada, yada. Oh, wait, half of that crap didn't even work for how many months until after it was released well, and how many firmware releases down the road are we now, you know, on the, on the Zygu? I love my G90 and I'm a G90 fan and I'm a G90 advocate, but I am on at least firmware number 10 that I've installed on that thing. And they continue to give firmwares out years after it's done. And every single one of them has to be firmware again, because there's a problem with the previous, right? It's just, is what it is. It's part of the deal. And it's we talk about like, like a just feature adding a feature, right? <laughs> right. When we talk about a feature rich radio that does all kinds of stuff is this 75, 705. I love it. I think that these are fantastic. But what I do tell people is, is that if you're going to be a POTA guy that goes out and operates single sideband and that's it, get this 891. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? yep. I mean, but if you want to have like Wi Fi, Bluetooth, digital, no wire station connected to your MacBook Pro and, uh, you know, all of that kind of stuff. T Star, baby. Right, then get the 705. So here's an interesting thought. The 891 is a radio, and it is an extremely good radio. The 705 and the 6100, I'm going to say it, they're, they're more toys than they are radios. <laughs> and I, have, I like them. I like all three of them. How dare. The 705, <laughs> I think, is a more professional toy than the 6100. I mean, I can see the 705 with the That's Mars mod if you're Marine or true. more um, Air Band. Or chicken band, CB. Sorry, it has um, airband. Thank you, Plasma. I'm assuming that is. I Red mean, Summit's transmit. Link. So thank oh, you for putting that I in there. And uh, Red yeah. Summit is going to be coming. Is he coming up at the half hour or the quarter? I, think uh, I don't know. He came. I think, up, he was, I think he's ten thirty. Ten minutes ago. It's. I it's think he's ten thirty. Or ten thirty, whatever. Yeah. 
Yes, Steve, you're exactly right. It's a shiny. It's pretty. The screen on the 6100 is gorgeous. But half the stuff didn't work. And they've they've fixed a lot of stuff and they've broken a lot more stuff and then we Broke have stuff. taken it upon ourselves the, the thing that i like best about the 6100 is nothing to do with the fact that it's a radio it's a linux computer that has a radio attached to it that's what makes it exciting so i actually have with help of other toads uh there's a, a toad by the name of lynx um, who has created a sd card bootable linux operating system image that will let you run WSJTX right oh, on the radio. Sweet. So Fantastic. all I need is antenna, radio, keyboard, mouse. That's it. And power. Well, it's got a battery. It's That's battery right. built in. Yep. Yeah. Um, somebody was saying something in here, and I can't remember what it was. Don. Oh well. So real quick, I'm going to end the poll that we have going on, which should give me the results. Where did the results go? There we oh, go. Toads, all right. So yours is linked in the chat. Your favorite mobile, we have 65%, we have 81 people responding, 65% say VHF is their favorite mobile. Uh, HF is a, coming in second at 20%, CB at seven, and then UHF at 6%. I think I think UHF doesn't get a whole lot of love. Why, and why is that? I, I don't know. I mean, there's there's neither in my area, so it kind of doesn't matter to me. Uh, we we do have, have UHF here, but uh, VHF is, is more popular, I think. Yeah, well, you it, it seems like you can get more range on uh, two meters yeah. than you can seventy centimeters. Yeah, you can. yeah. Um, and that's probably probably why. Um, I know the big re the big repeaters here are all two meters. The smaller ones are are, are uh, seventy. Don said I'm left off GMRS, and John was saying I left off cross banding. Yeah, there's a that's the thing with doing videos. You always have to leave some stuff off because there's just not enough time. <laughs> but so. we're like, hey, hurry up and throw up a poll. Um, so, but would you buy, I would never mount this in my car. This, the, uh, 705. The 705. Oh, that would be awesome. If you had a 705 plus an amp, plus a tuner that you didn't have to <laughs> mess with. Oh, yeah. Man. If you wanted to put about $5,000 worth of stuff in your car, that'd I'm, be I'm okay with that. Is. Hey, I'll live once. Uh, YOLO. That's right. I, I, maybe I'll do that. YOLO, it's, baby. It's, it is, it is a little, it is a little bit smaller than my uh, 991A in one direction. Um, and I do have an amp if I could find the freaking uh, power cord for it. I mean, I, lo I love that radio, but I would not mount it in the car. Um, it would need to be an amp that you don't need to change bands on or anything. I want to just spin the dial and key up. That's what I want to do. Same thing with the tuner. Well, I mean, if, you, if you're if you putting a two-meter radio, I guess if we're talking about HF, that's one thing. Yeah. There's also a lot of two-meter amps available, too. And some of them are pretty budget-friendly. So here we are with the Yesus, the 400 yeah, and the 300. <clears throat> I think the 400 is probably a better radio than the 300, but I wouldn't likely, if I was going to buy one of these, I'd probably buy the 300 over the 400. If I was buying one today, I would probably buy the 300 just because of the price difference. Um, I want to say the 400 has gone up, but I what love I've the 400 screen. the same interface. Um, I haven't seen enough of the 300 to know, but I, that screen on the 400 is awesome. Or it is older gentlemen who have to wear splaining glasses to read stuff. Right. It it was probably about four years ago. These four hundreds were super affordable, they were like, and Yesu they were was bucks. flooding the market with um, system fusion repeaters. Like yep. a lot of clubs were buying mm -hmm. them, and they and they were they were taking over like crazy. Um, they were taking over market segment like crazy. Like I remember seeing these things all over the place. Um, Definitely cool, cool slick radio. Expensive, but you get you get a lot with it. Like if if things like GPS and uh, APRS and all that was important to me, that would be the radio that I would get. See, it's not important to me, but I like it because yeah. of the screen. But that's why I'm looking at this 300 DR. It uh, does it does fusion. It has APRS and all that stuff. But the other thing that price and Don said it in the chat too. The price on that has gone up. I didn't pay almost six hundred dollars for my 400. They've so gone up. Larry says he's behind on the conversation, but he's not had great luck with ham sticks either. Right, Larry. Larry's on my side, not yours. T.O. and right. ham stick lovers. <laughs> T.O. and I, Chuck with their I, ham stick love. I am a ham stick lover, and you mount that with a glass <laughs> mount, and it is the best thing ever. Gym. I just did a video on it. That's all. I have the love that The love that dares not bear its name. <laughs> So uh, when you take a look at this, this is the ICOM 51A, and this is a radio I think I like too. Um, 
as, as D-Star. Uh, but the thing I like about it is, is it, I was talking to somebody who had one. They said it has the repeater book. You can you can load all the repeaters and use the right. GPS yep. and all that stuff. Absolutely. To just, um, pull up repeaters in your area, and that's awesome. But uh, I never bought it. But that would be a cool it's one. It's on sale. That's a six dollars. Six dollars, man. Let me let me beat a path down there. I'd like to know how many people use an HT mobile instead of screwing with one in there. A lot of I know a lot of people. A lot of people, a lot of people do that. You know? I do that for for uh, rig to rig sometimes. Yeah. You know, travel with a buddy or something like that. Well, I used to drive with my DMR, my uh, B Tech DMR radio all the time. I used to keep that in there. Right. These thirty one hundred R's. I um, have that one. Yeah, 65 watts. Now, it's only it's only uh, two meters, right? Yep. Yep. Yes. But, but um, Front-firing speaker, and I got it. Here's the thing is, Kenwood and Icom, I think, make the exact same radios. I'm, I'm just saying they may come out of the same factory. I'm not sure. Yeah, the TM281, yeah. The, what, but the Yesu's usually cheaper. I don't know if it is. Now, that is not digital, that Yesu up there. No. Right now, that's just FM. Oh, okay. mine is actually the one I have is. What have you so, got? I've got. I think it's the thirty-one DR or something like that. Thirty-one. I think that was this can't discontinued. I think DR, they did right? discontinue it, but okay. mine is digital. Well, see, so the thing is, is like um, it's a good little in, radio. It, in my Jeep, like I, I really want to get what is the the six the six thousand is the new Yesu dual bander mm -hmm. that that's just yep. um, analog only. Yep. That that'll probably replace my seventy-nine hundred. I, I don't want digital in the car i know people are like oh that's that's here what but um i just don't i mean it would be cool if i had it but if i'm looking at 300 versus 500 dollars for a radio i'm fine with just dual band analog that's more than enough for me in the in the jeep when i'm driving I around you, if you don't i was with you on the hamsticks bro but now you're, gone, <laughs> you're, you're talking off the rails. crazy talking that's crazy. crazy talk son <laughs> if you don't care about 70 that that the 3100 is a great little radio 65 watts um well, and it's cheap, right? Like, so the yeah. thing is, you can pick this up for you another. You can't buy a meter. Chinese radio for that price. Yeah. Well, and this is nice. It's a nice one. <laughs> so you can pick that up and, and drop it in your ham shack and then have it just a two meter. Like, so, right. so my right. 2900, I'll just sit here and scan all the local two meter repeaters. And then until I hear something, it stops and I get to, and it doesn't, because it's a different radio, it doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Right. That's what I, I got the 2900 that. for is to take camping in with me so I can hook it up, have, 80 or 90 watts you know you guys ever like notice the wide it. wide range of two meter and two meter 440 analog radios i mean the the, the product line from icom and yesu is huge and i'm like i don't i don't get the market for this i mean honestly one, one or good two one. huh yeah right take one good one not nine mediocre or, ones or or one lower power more budget friendly and one higher power a little more expensive but for crying out loud, they probably got 12 VHF radios alone. Well, I don't know. People kind of have a lot of these things, though, right? Mm -hmm. What's that 6,000? It has a special uh, plug-in, though, doesn't it? For, it has a data, data jack a on data, the back of it. Data jack. But that's the 6-pin so mini den, isn't it? I don't know. That has I, I'm thinking optional. about just picking one of these up for here in the, here in the shack. It does have Bluetooth. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It. 1997 called. Got in that radio. <laughs> you have to add it to it, though. Yeah, I don't come with it. That's right. It's an add-on. My buddy has this radio, the 4100A. I, I almost bought one of those, and then I found a deal on a 5100, and I ended up mm. buying that instead. And here's the 200DR. Now, what is so, the differences between that and the 300? I, you know what? I don't a little know. smaller. I don't. Yeah, I think it's because there's a there's a pretty good price difference, right? The three hundreds a a hundred more. Yeah, Wasn't it like yeah, something like, like that? Almost five hundred bucks. Here's the Linko. This is the one that uh, this is the two meter version. Jeff, ain't nothing wrong with 1997. I just don't want my radio living in 1997. This looks like a, it is DMR. So this looks like a DMR radio. This is probably made by Anytone. Um, that looks like a 578. That, take a better look at that. It's, it looks a little bit different, but this interface is the same. Yeah, it's real close. The one mm -hmm. above it's kind of nice, that Alinko. I like that one. 
see, I thought about getting one of these or even just getting the Anytone uh, five seven eight for the sh for the shack, but I, I do all my DMR. I don't need it. Like I do all my DMR with a HT, and I don't even do much DMR these days. Hey Chuck, it comes with a mounting bracket. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't going to say anything they about should. that because somebody gets started on that. Here's a try. Here's the tri band version. <laughs> this is starting to get me. That's what Don wants. There you go, Don. Um. I think we need to talk about Plasma's unhealthy fetish with the tri-band bow fang that he mentioned the other day, too. Well, you know, some people, it's important to focus. Like, son, who are you going to talk to on 220? No one in the world has it. It's like four people. <clears throat> I know so many people who've had this TH, whatever it is, 9800. Yep. But, um, and they all loved it. They, so let's say like one out of ten is like, I hate that thing. But, but so many people have given this thing positive. They mention. used to have a, what, a 7800? It was a it was the eighty eight hundred clone. These are these are clones of uh, Yesu. Yesu, right? Okay, Jeff. Jeff dropped uh, some knowledge in the chat. The three hundred is true dual receive. Two hundred is dual band but single receive. Well, there you go. There you go. The four hundo is true dual receive as well. Thank you, uh, Jeffrey. So they got a couple of different ones here. Like this is a Radioidity DB twenty G GMRS Mobile twenty watt nine hundred nineteen. This is a pretty popular radio. This DB twenty five D is a it's a DMR radio. It's tiny, man. It is DMR. This it one is, is that pull that one up, ape. Everybody getting bossy oh, over in this piece. Please, please pull that up, sir, ape. Primate. <laughs> it's like there's a radio uh, in there somewhere. They yeah, Jim, that's Jim's hand. They had you model this, or is that? Yeah, it's uh... totally man. Those long fingers, right? <laughs> fingers look like cut off sausages. The, I have a thing. I have a friend who has that radio, and I have physically touched and tried to use that radio. And now this was about two years ago. The firmware on it was hot garbage. Mm -hmm. It was horrible interface, and it looks twenty gorgeous. water, and it's wee. It's tiny. I had a version of this radio, the Tai 1088, I think is what it was. And this Joker is, you can't see it in these pictures, but this thing is small. Let me, let me just go back. See it, Gary. It's like 25 watts. This is like a little bit bigger than the deck of cards. And oh, wow. 25 watts. No, it's just FM, right? Is that FM? Yeah, just Only, FM. Okay. But um, when I bought it, I bought it off of Amazon for like 65 bucks. Now, that was like eight years ago. Um, I still have it. I've, I've used it in, in videos like when I've needed to do like power tests and stuff like that. It's pretty nice. Thank you, Red Summit. Appreciate that. Yep. Hey, yeah. Red. Thanks, Red. Red's show is coming up in seven minutes on his channel. He's Make sure you click that ring. Off a pack tenna. I, I am that. going to... Oh, I can't because I'm not logged in. I was going to pin that, but yeah, but check out Red. He's an awesome guy. I got you. Don says he's got a lot of 220 where he lives. Where I am, Don, there's like no 220 for hundreds of miles. But I just you wanted know. to show some of these more affordable Chinese. That. Like here's this one. I don't know. I don't have any problem with people buying these. But some people get all worked up and they're like, they're just bow fangs with the, with the, with the splatter bands and the spurious. And, and that which, might be true. Which one is that one? The DB25? Yeah, but was I mean, this, is, of these this is rebranded. I, like Redivis has this, Radio Oddity has the TYT has it. They all have these same radios. Yeah, I have the TYT version of that that's in my uh, ham can thing I did. And it was fine. It wasn't splattery. And BTEC was the other one I wanted to show. I remember this. they were by saying that this was the uh, Icon ripoff radio that they did. Oh, that's but, cool uh, looking. People, people all really like sir. People really like this radio when it came out. It's expensive, though, man. Three hundred and seventy-nine bucks. Right. So that's DMR. Just no. no. It's just a tri. It's a tri-bander. Tri-band. Oh, it's tri-band. Wasn't that? Uh, that's not. That's not a whole lot cheaper than the Icon, was it? Nah, hundred bucks maybe. Yeah. But um, it looks cool. Yeah, this is another one that uh, this fifty times it was a fifty water, two hundred bucks. This looks a lot like the Anytone it has one that looks like this. Um, this is just this is just analog as well, and then this is their GMRS radio. I've heard really good things about this GMRS radio. See that looks that looks ham sexy right there. 
with that. Yeah, I'm, t- I'm tempted, but the wa- the Wax Sun has one, but it's like 200 bucks more. Um, it's supposed to be a really nice radio too, and that's repeater know. capable as well. Yeah, but it, it can scan. To, to, I bet you this is the exact same radio as the other one. It just has a different set of filters in it, right? Like this is this radio. They're the same. They're the same thing, right? Looks like it to me. And if I go down here, here's some of the other cheaper ones. But I think that's really okay. That's probably going to take us to the end, right? We're starting to, we got five minutes left. Anime saying that they're reasonably priced. Yes, they are. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Philip is saying that the Waxon is super head, which is kind of nice. And Don is saying that the KG1000G blows that away. Okay, what it, what is the KG1000G? It's the it's the Waxon um, version of a GMRS okay. radio. It sounded like a secure telephone or something. Liberty saying he is tempted to, but he thought the Midland 400 was awesome. I have some Midland HTs. Um, I don't know. I don't know anything about Midland uh, mobiles. Back in the day, they were a pretty big name. They were a lot of citizens band stuff yeah, and weather yeah. radios. All right. Well, what do we got, T.O.? You got anything over there you wanted to throw in? No, not really. Uh, we've got a couple of projects coming up, though. The uh, Coffee and Ham Radios is doing some stuff on the YouTubers Ham Fest. And one of those is mm-hmm. the Super Pixie Kit. And right. uh, Greg has been going crazy with this thing. WECB 640 has been going crazy with this thing in Toads. I think I think helpful. we just uh, fueled some addiction. He was having a little bit of a fever, <laughs> and we got him a little bit of a cure. Um so if you want to see all the progress that Greg has made, check out the Toads Discord. There's a link to that in the description. Um, and then we've got Wayne from Ellacraft coming on. And he says Thank he you. likes his ham radio and chill time with uh, coffee and ham radio. So he's going to be talking about some new product releases and some new features and some ways to maximize um, you know, your use of Ellacraft products. That's awesome. And then um, we have Chuck, John Crook, too. Chuck's we got, got an John. antenna build coming out for the YouTubers Ham Fest and uh, I yeah, do as well. New antenna, new antenna, and uh, Cruck is going to be on our show also, right? I'm one of them. I don't know if that's uh, he is Coffee and Ham Radios. We we got something special uh, cooked up with John on that day, so that's hopefully yeah. We got to we got to we got to finalize that, that plan, but uh, no, that's yeah. cool. And then uh, I think I think FEP Labs is actually going to do a video for the YouTubers Ham Fest as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll I'll be doing. Um, I'll just be kind of demoing some scope spectrum analyzer functions, that kind of thing, I think. I haven't finalized that in my head yet, but that seems to be where I'm going. Well, that's kind of yeah, what my... you were monkeying with earlier today, yeah, right? Yeah, that's that's my plan. We got we got a couple project bills because we got a project for next month here on car that we're uh we're working on in the background. There's you can't see it, it's in the secure part of the lab. <laughs> and, uh, tell you, man, we have so much shit go right. <laughs> what he said. What Where he said. Are, what he we have said. so many Where's little are. side projects that I can't keep track of all this. I, I'm going to have to make a schedule for Jim. Oh, this is what I must work on today. I right. We've had all these parts showing up. And, uh, I need one of those whiteboards like, right in front of me. I can just start right. marking things off. We <laughs> what have, the hell is all these parts? We have, we have YouTubers Ham Fest projects. I have, I think, and aren't you guys doing stuff specifically for YouTubers Ham Fest as well? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm having some Utes on to talk about the Yoda camp. Right. Right, and and yeah. Charles, you're doing an antenna, right? Something. Yeah, we've got a new antenna coming out, and we'll debut Sweet. it then. I think the worldwide premiere. Yeah, premiere. We actually have. What do you have? What do you got? Three antennas on? coming out, but uh, just I've got a. Uh, I got an antenna build that I'm working on, and uh, for Hamfest. Yeah, and it is going to be awesome. So at the last ham fest, and I'm definitely not bragging. I got lucky. I was in the right place. I had a good spot. I had a good spot on the mm-hmm. schedule. What one year later, the, the the antenna build that I did over there, um, I think it's like twenty three thousand views or something like that. Nice. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to do another antenna build. People seem look to at, love the le- look red and flexing. Flexing. Look at him flexing. He's flexing. He's, <laughs> if I multiply all my views times a thousand, I might have a hundred. So I was like, um, <laughs> And do it again. We're gonna do a round yeah. two. So we'll see. Flex. What, uh, so we got we got a lot of stuff, a lot of radio. stuff coming up on our channels individually, and then for YouTubers Ham Fest and on Coffee and Ham Radio. 
Yep. Oh, we don't want the streams across. Thanks, everybody. Right. Take care. Have Later, a good day. Everyone.